we yes. played a show in uh, in Santiago in Chile and mm. uh, there was a guy outside the venue who was selling like refrigerator magnets <laughs> of the they, ocean? Were, they were yeah they were super cool wow. like uh, the Fenerozoic logo and everything. I was like, dude, can I have two? Yeah, I'm gonna pay you. <laughs> and I just I just bought two refrigerator magnets from this guy because I, I thought it was great. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. Today, I'm being joined by one of my favorite active drummers, Paul Zidel. Zidel? Z- Zidel? Zidel? Whatever you, whatever you want. <laughs> uh, it's like a running gag. I don't know how to say anybody's names. It's amazing. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> Brother, you are the drummer for The Ocean, uh, The Ocean Collective, as it's known as well. Um, also, Nightmarer. Mm-hmm. And and Fern, right? That's correct. Fern is your solo project. That is also correct. <laughs> <laughs> cool, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, you honestly, you are one of my favorite mm-hmm. drummers, man. I I, I want to start I with all. It. I'm gonna do all the compliments up front, so just we can get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, but, just just shove it over. <laughs> <laughs> just get it out of the way. But that that playthrough video of you doing Jurassic, um, which I think is like a one take. It, it looks, is, yeah. It's, it's insane. And I show that video to any everyone that I can, like people that even don't listen to, you know, the type of music like the ocean does, who's just, just people that are just drummers or inter- interested in music. I'm like, look at this. This is insane. <laughs> it's so clean and crisp and Thank everything you. is, you know, like perfectly, you know, done. Um, how do you how do you do something like that? How do you prepare to do a one take of a song that's like eight minutes long already? It's like a very long song, but h- what do you do for preparation? Well, first of all, I practice the song. Obviously, <laughs> it's uh, for for me. It's always easier to to remember stuff if I'm being part of the creation progress. Mm. You know, like uh, sitting in the rehearsal room creating these parts and coming up with fills and stuff like this. Um, and once the song is recorded, I usually listen to the album myself quite a lot to, uh, to memorize the, let's say the, the main structure of the songs and memorize all the fill-ins I play so I can recreate it live if I want to, and also allow myself to have the freedom to improvise if I, if there's space for it. And then, I mean, I don't really do many playthroughs, or at least up until now, I haven't done many, uh, maybe two or three. So um, I usually just have like a week or two where I'm like, I'm going to focus on this only now. I'm going to go to the room every day and practice and just make sure I can nail it, you know, especially with a song like this, which is 13 and a half minutes or something. and. And the the initial idea was to set up multiple cameras, but for some reason we decided to just do that in one take and not cut it together because it would have been weird with with the with the surroundings and with the weather changes and uh, the the differences in lighting and everything. So uh, in the end, we just can I swear on this podcast? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Fuck it. That's what we thought. <laughs> Fuck it, just do it. Exactly. And um, it took me like, I think, four or five takes to nail it. Like the first four or five were still a bit shaky because I was like, I'm, I'm not really used to being filmed uh, while playing drums, you know, like yeah. the focus being on me. So I was a bit nervous as well, and then yeah, you're used I to being said, in the back hiding, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in the, I'm not in the focus in this band, you know. Like I, I like hiding behind my, my little fortress there, you know, like my, my safe space. Yeah. And um, then I said, guys, I need a moment. I went outside. We were recording in an old mill, um, which is also parts like a, like a horse farm. Um, they do, like therapeutic stuff there with horses and 
So I just oh. sat down on, on what is called the philosopher's bank bench. Uh, and I was just sitting there kind of going into my head. Okay, like you can do this. And then went back in, guys, let's go. And then nailed it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I you know, yeah. I found myself whenever I have to do something like that, where there's multiple takes uh, or, you know, I'm trying to do it perfectly. The mm. more I practice sometimes, my, I don't know, maybe my brain is just wired wrong, but the more I practice, the more frustrated I get, the more mm. I'm more anxiety I get that I'm going to miss something where if, yeah. as if I, if I'm confident in that, I know the parts and I go mm. in, I usually just knock it out pretty quick. But if I yeah. sit there and like kind of dwell on it and do a lot of repetition, then I start mm. getting anxiety of, of like, oh, I'm going to. I'm going to mess this up. I'm going to miss one of these yeah. parts, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's usually like for me, it's when I, when I repeat stuff too many times that I get very focused on the tiniest details, you know, because in my head I have like these, I have a hundred different versions of what I played and I compare them and, you know, like the, the better you get at something, the more, the more you understand how things can be if they're perfect. Yeah, you know, yeah, so uh, yeah. you kind of start over analyzing things, and to me, it always it always helps if at some point I'm like, dude, you know how this works. You know, you've you've done this before. You've recorded in the studio, you've played live. You know how to play drums. Yeah, yeah. You know, just just chill the fuck out. Just and fuck it and do it. <laughs> just enjoy it. You know, and like as soon as I get that that pressure off my shoulders, that's usually when I play play best because I just enjoy it and yeah. yeah it's the same in in the studio as well you know like you have to have some some room to to just enjoy playing the instrument you're you're recording yeah absolutely you know at, at least in the studio sometimes you have the benefit of a producer that can like fix you know if you missed one little hit they can replace yeah. that hit with one of your own sound so it doesn't yeah. look, uh, uh you know but it's the curse of the creative too. the whole uh, perfectionist thing. Like, you know, when you're mm. when you, you it's never enough. You always want to like yeah. perfect it more and more and more. But uh, you have, you know, I think that's the step where a creative person evolves into the next level is when they're able to finish a work and just let mm. it go into the let it go into the world. And then let's move on to the next project. But it's totally, yeah. you know, you get you get stuck in that loop forever. Yeah. You know how many artists yeah. I know that are just stuck at home that they haven't they have albums of music that they've never even released to the world <laughs> like what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to finish this very Someday. soon, trust yeah. me. It's not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, the thing is also it's the the more you learn about production and recording, the more you understand like there is not really a perfect take anyways, you know, like yeah. everything everything you record is to some degree flawed it's in in even if it's like the the miniature details you know like you can fix anything in post production as well that's true yeah that's true uh speaking of you know projects you have the the you know we've been trying to do this podcast for a few months actually i was trying to we catch have, you yeah. I'm, <laughs> i was trying to catch you when when the albums had just come out because you had two albums yeah. drop kind of relatively close to each other the 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 oceans holocene came out may 19th and i know the mm -hmm. nightmare album came out i think what before it right may may 5th i th i think uh may may 5th or 7th or something like yeah. two weeks apart basically yeah which is wild to drop two albums you know that you're involved in within a week yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah and the fun the fun part is it took almost two years for them to be finished <laughs> yeah know? like yeah, both yeah. both of the albums pretty much started uh right before the pandemic or at least the the i think holocene got robin wrote that when when the pandemic had just started and the nightmare album was done just before that and uh yeah it took like three years basically to, yeah that's that's to drop them at, in the same moment <laughs> That's wild. The pandemic did help a lot, I think, with with creativity. You know, obviously it was a terrible tragedy, but there's yeah. a lot of people that had more time to work on music you know, during yeah. that time. They weren't out on the road. Um, this this Holocene album felt uh, a little different, but in a good way. 
And, mm-hmm. and, you know, after listening to some of the Fern stuff, I noticed that there's a lot more electronic uh, influence there. Is, mm-hmm. is The Holocene album has a lot more electronics as well compared to previous uh, Ocean releases. Is that your influence that you brought in? Uh, I would say to some degree, but uh, the main, um, well, the main creative process for Holocene was done by Robin and Peter, um, our synth guy. Um, sometime during the pandemic, they just started sending each other ideas. And Peter is, I mean, is a synth nerd and uh, he's, he has a super nice studio also at the, at the old mill where I recorded the playthrough where he has this little setup. And, um, well, he basically just sent Robin a, a Dropbox folder. Like, this is what I have check it out and then uh, Robin started working on on songs with that material and it just went back and forth but on the previous album on uh, Phenozoic 2 I had two or three songs that came out of my feather basically and I think we already kind of started going to this direction uh, with the previous two albums anyways so this kind of just felt like a natural natural evolution you know yeah um and the fern stuff i've been working on this album for almost six years you know so uh wow it's 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 been coming for for a long time and uh i've always done electronic stuff as well and uh producing some songs by myself so i think it's kind of a gradual thing going on with both projects in Mm. parallel you know I just, yeah, I, I mean, just, it, it's hard yeah. to, to separate the influences when you're in there. Like, yeah. you know, it, it, the ocean being a band that's that's it's hard to put a genre on it. There's a lot mm-hmm. of, you know, there's death metal elements. There's, you know, just plain rock. There's electronic. Mm-hmm. There's it's all it goes all over the place, which is one of the reasons I love it so much. But I felt like that that album had far more like electronic and synthy vibes to it which i mm-hmm. guess it plays plays into the story of what's going on with the ocean anyway because it, it starts with you know going back into the prehistoric times and the evolution of man and the mm-hmm. st- you know the destruction of the planet and going into like i guess what our future is going to look like which is all ai and synth mm-hmm. and uh you know electronic based yeah but um what would you say for you like how did you get into electronic as a you know because when you listen to Nightmare, it's pure, like just devastation of, of metal and <laughs> death metal and craziness. Yeah. Um, so how did you get into like the electronic elements and, and what were some of the bands that influenced you into that? I, it, it actually started super early for me when I was still a, a teenager. Um, we had just moved to Berlin with my family and and that... I would say in, in those teenage years, I went through many different musical episodes. Um, and one of them was electronic music. Like there was the uh, there was a huge electronic scene uh, blowing up right after the, the reunification. And when the wall came down, there were lots of different uh, abandoned houses, which got occupied by the, well, by the, by punks and by, free spirits or creative people who who set up there to do whatever the fuck they wanted and um that's how how a lot of the the really then growing electronic music scene in berlin started and then you had the the love parade which was a huge event in berlin like in the late 90s 97 98 we had love parades uh, with more than one and a half million people basically on the streets, you know, and uh, I was just, I think, 15, 16, 17 years old. Wow. And, um, or maybe, no, actually, I was much younger. I was 12, I think, when I went to my first love parade. So uh, I grew up with this, uh, with this huge electronic scene basically in my, in my young teenage years. And then from there, I started listening to, to German hip hop. <laughs> German hip hop. Yeah, German hip hop. There was a, a big German hip hop scene back in the day, which was influenced by the, by the classical, U.S. hip hop. You know, trying to to rip it off and uh, 
Do you have like a? Transit? Do you have well, before you move on? Do you have like a, yeah. a one or two or maybe three of the like German hip hop that I should check out? Like who? who, who what like the, the the hip hop that I grew up with. Yeah, um, the German. I want German though that I may not have heard. Yeah, earlier. there's a there was a German guy called Torch. Um, yeah, like like the like the metal band. Just I think it was without the the e, the e. or with an e. Um. Uh, what else we had <laughs> sammy deluxe um sammy deluxe okay sammy deluxe uh, we had the absolute beginner which is absolute beginners um ferris mc uh yeah i can i can send you some stuff if you want i can send you some links yeah send um, me some stuff i'm always curious to hear yeah. new music and i've never heard i don't think i've heard a lot of german uh, hip hop. I did hear some like yeah. British uh, rap, you know, mm -hmm. the, like the streets and a couple other people yeah. like that. But uh, I've never, I don't think I've heard many German hip hop. It was, it was very influenced by the like the early nineties hip hop from the US. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the hip hop which, I love. So <laughs> exactly, and um, that's what I grew into as well. Somehow, right after the electronic <laughs> techno thing, you know, um, yeah. and then from there. It went over to to crossover stuff like Limp Bizkit and uh, the, the early new metal, you know, and that's how I kind of grew into this uh, into the more heavy stuff. And, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna quote you on that now for all the magazines. The Ocean, influenced by Limp Bizkit and new metal, <laughs> for fans of new metal, yeah. listen to the Ocean. Yeah, Ro Robin's gonna cancel me <laughs> right away. <laughs> oh man, Robin's no, but I mean, I I grew up with that stuff, you know. So yeah, there's no there's no shame in that. And, exactly, uh, that's one thing I do appreciate. I feel like we're in a time now where we've moved past the the weird shaming aspect of it. Like I totally, yeah. Everybody listened to it. Like there was a time where, yeah. oh, you listen to corn, you're a loser. It's like, guys, everyone listened to it. Yeah. It was on TV. It was with exactly, back when yeah. MTV still showed music videos. Like it was everywhere. Yeah. What are you going to do? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I there's, uh, you know, people always go for this, like, what's your guilty pleasure? Oh, yeah. I don't have a guilty pleasure. You know, I, I, Obvi I honestly just like listening to this stuff. You know, there's many many things that I listen to that probably people would curl up their their toenails. You know, but uh, I think it's important, especially for yeah. like a a person that's like for you, like you're you're in the rhythm section, so you're you're trying to create rhythm, and mm -hmm. especially in metal, there's a lot of stiffness sometimes there's a, it's very robotic yeah. very da, 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 you know like very there's no yeah. flow and that's one thing i loved about what you do like you listen to that playthrough of jurassic mm. yes it's heavy and there's double pedal and whatever but every, in between there's weaves of like rhythm and you got this like kind of i wouldn't say hip-hop but just kind of like you know that you hit all the different toms you're doing <laughs> these crazy fills on this on the on the hi-hats that mm. it just feels flowy like there's a there's a rhythm there's a beat to it that makes you want to kind of flow into the next parts as opposed to this rigidness that you usually get from a like a death metal thing not not to say that i didn't do that myself in the past as well you know and oh, sure. i mean with, with with nightmare it's also there's some part that are very mechanical mm. for a reason you know they yeah. uh, it very the stoic yeah. it serves the purpose you know but uh i mean we all we all grow creatively with what we listen to and I've always had a very diverse taste in music anyways, you know, from my family background as well. My father listening to all sorts of stuff that I can't even name anymore. Uh, you know, like there's, there's just, there, there's never been this, uh, I should not listen to this right, 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 attitude, right. you know, like, why not just <laughs> listen to it? If you enjoy it, it's fine. You know, if it's, if, it, if the, if the contents of it musically attracts you and you can relate to it and it gives you an emotional response, then listen to it, you know, whatever it is. Were your parents supportive of the your choice to become a musician? Uh, I mean, is because I know some parents, I don't know, in Germany it might be different, but like, you know, parents out here sometimes are like, oh, musicians are not, like, that's not a career. Go get a career. Mm. And then and then maybe do your little music thing on the side. Yeah. 
Dude, we're in Germany. If there's one thing that Germans don't like is uh, creative careers. <laughs> okay, all right. No, I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating. That maybe that was like this was like this in the past. But my my parents were extremely supportive. That's um, good. My father was a musician or is a musician himself. So I grew up with music. Uh, I don't know. My first memories are with related to music. So. I've always been to concerts and yeah, when I, I started drums relatively late when I was 15. Okay. Um, I mean, that's still pretty, late, pretty good. A late bloomer, you know, <laughs> some people start with when they're two or three years old, you know, yeah. like they're, they just fall into the drums and then they pick up the sticks and then that's what they do for the rest of their life. <laughs> yeah. And um, in that sense, I started relatively late. But my father was super supportive, my mom as well. Um, I quit school to uh, pursue that career, basically, you know, like high school I or college. Um, I don't know the well, it was a gymnasium. I don't know which which one it relates to. It, I think it's high school. High school but had gymnasiums. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I think I think I finished gymnasium minus one year or something hmm. and um i just decided to be a drummer basically <laughs> sometimes that's what you gotta do man like people don't yeah. understand like you're wasting if 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 you're not planning on being an academic person you're wasting time mm. you're wasting your youth where you should be learning and doing the art or the craft that you're trying to do um the, the best sure. thing to do yeah. is jump into it you know and, and get out i i graduated high school but it was, you know, a struggle. I had to, yeah. <laughs> I blackmailed my vice principal into letting me <laughs> out of the school. And then, yeah. you know, I went to college for a little bit. But while I was there, I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. This is such a waste of yeah. time. I'm not enjoying this. Yeah. It was, yeah. For me, it was the same. I was spending most of my days in the rehearsal room, you know, yeah. and I had less and less uh, fun in school and uh, hard to keep up with stuff. You know, it's not like I didn't. I didn't manage to to participate or something. I just didn't have any interest anymore. Mm. And at some point, the the principal of our school just came to me, Mr. Seidel, you know you don't have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah, and he basically said, you, you can just go. We don't have to force you to be here, you know? And then I went back home and I talked to my dad. I was like... Uh, I think I'm going to become a drummer, dad. And he said, okay. And that's all he ever said to it. That's you know, um, it's, it's pretty amazing. Sometimes I had the, like, uh, just thoughts of regret, you know, like just doubts. Was it the right decision? Shouldn't I have studied something, you know, <laughs> but whenever, whenever I come to that point now, I'm like, Look at me, you know, like yeah. you're doing, you're doing, you're still doing what you love. You're touring the world, you know, you can make a living with this stuff and you have a nice community. Yeah. That's great. No, you're doing it. exactly what you should be doing. And, you know, that's very yeah. fortunate that you're able to, to do it because a lot of people don't yeah. they get stuck in, in their yeah. world and, uh, you know, they don't have the support of parents that want to, you know, they're like, yeah, go ahead. Do, do your thing. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of parents, you know, especially where I came from, they're very strict. Like I wasn't even allowed mm. to listen to certain music from them yeah. because they were religious, too. So it was like, mm. oh, that's that's Satan's music. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you just made it worse, really. Like as a kid, mm. you know, that that's the rebellious of course, spirit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, don't yeah. listen to that. That's the first thing I'm going to listen to. What are you telling me? <laughs> don't push the red button. Yeah. All right. OK, let's see what happens. Yeah, I yeah. remember the first cassette I ever bought on my own, uh, like on just no parents. I had my own money was mm -hmm. uh, Nine Inch Nails because I was oh, told wow. not to listen to them because it was satanic. Oh, so but I got Pretty yeah. Hate Machine and Danzig on cassette. Oh, fuck. I just <laughs> listened to Pretty Hate Machine today, actually. So good. What a, what a great album. Yeah. Yeah. He does. What a, Nobody what talks about his rap skills in that album. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's, it's like when you listen to the production now you know like after all these years uh of course it sounds a bit it doesn't sound as 
overly produced as the newer stuff you know mm. it's super raw and intimate somehow but that's what i love about it it's just like you can see this 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 guy had, was up to something you know like oh yeah totally yeah yeah man that's he, he i mean he influenced most of my youth musically like industrial electronic but also mm-hmm. heavy and and aggressive and yeah i mean that's that was such a, a moment in time for real uh yeah. but again very happy that that you were able to pursue your career even if you say you're a late bloomer i still think 15 is pretty good i mean that's it's a good age to start something far. that you love. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. It's, it's, at least your brain is also still more capable of uh, understanding and learning and mm-hmm. growing into things that you feel you're passionate about. You know, like you're not, you're not, you're not already in this in this machine kind of. You know, where you have to, okay, you have to go out working. You have to make a living. You have to pay your rent. Bam. You have to focus on that. You know. So. There's other priorities when you're 15. Yeah. And that yeah. priority is, yeah, can be something inspirational. I'm glad it was. I'm glad it was. Cause, I mean, yeah. look at the music you're producing now. It's in, it honestly, and I get, I, you know, I said we were going to leave the compliments in the beginning, but there is not, <laughs> there is not a lot of bands out there that sound like the ocean that, that are trying to push the boundaries like the, the mm. like the way you guys do. Um, and I'm appreciative of that, but now, when when you were saying you're touring the world and whatnot, I've talked to Robin a few times about mm-hmm. about the potential of you guys m- moving to the United States. Is that something that you would do? Would you even consider that? I've always I've always played with a thought, and um, there's still the opportunity to do that. Like um, right now, we have the we have an O2 visa. Um, Robin has the O1 visa, which is uh, valid for. I think three or five years, um, which allows us to work in the US. So in theory, we could also move over to the US. Um, I mean, I have lots of friends in the US as well, you know, Um, Portland, for example, where Nightmare is located right now with Simon, John and Keith, they're there. Um, Lots of other friends on the West Coast, I have many friends on the East Coast as well and all over the place um it's just for me the it's a of course it's like a, jumping to very cold water you know like i have a very i have a very solid foundation here in berlin with uh, also with pelagic records and the work i have here and the musicians we can work with and everything so uh it would be a step into the into very unknown territory in a, in a way, you know? Um, sure. Yeah. I, but still I could, I could totally imagine that even if it's just for a year or so, you know, just uh, see how it goes. And I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Maybe, how's the, and, how is it going in, in Germany right now? Cause I've heard stories from many musicians about there being like tr- trouble with musicians in Europe specifically mm-hmm. in terms of, uh, venue costs for merchandise and and touring costs mm-hmm. where a lot of musicians are like we can't we can't keep doing this like we just can't financially mm-hmm. keep doing this band in Europe so is that something you guys have found yourself with or you with the pelagic records you've been able to sustain yourself a little better um to be honest i mean everything has gone up in, in costings um the expenses for touring have have really uh, gone up. Um, I can't really say how much in, in percent, mm-hmm. but it, it's you can really feel it. Like uh, the the gas prices, the renting of of cars or vans or buses, um, merchandise costs has, has has gone up. Production of vinyl and CD has gone up tremendously. Um, but I I don't really feel like this has affected us negatively too much. Like um, I think people were very hungry for concerts um, when the pandemic started kind of going down, you know, Um, because we had almost two and a half years of no concerts and people were just craving uh, culture and standing in front of a stage and seeing bands perform again. So um and we've been touring our asses off 
ever since we got the chance again, you know, like last year we played over 150 shows just because we, we thought let's use the chance we have now, you know, like who knows yeah. when the next pand pandemic is hitting. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, or when the, when, when the, maybe there's a mutation or something and we're getting lock locked up again. So let's just do it now. And um, I think that kind of helped us in, in terms of, Mm, harvesting <laughs> you know the har har it sounds i don't want to i know if it's the right word to use but uh harvesting the the need for for music and just making sure people can enjoy live concerts somehow you know um of course we ha we have more expenses you know um so prices for our merch and vinyl have gone up and I think prices for tickets have been reasonably moderately raised a little bit. I'm not sure how much they've gone up, but it, it, it feels to me like shows are back on the map. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. There's too many, there's too many shows now. Now I'm like having a hard time going to all the yeah, shows. Uh, <laughs> that, that's what I mean. Like I don't, I don't have the impression that, uh, that the music scene in general is, is struggling too much anymore. Of course, uh, I mean, earning money with music in general is a completely different well, yeah. topic, I think, yeah. you know, like, uh, of course, playing live shows doesn't necessarily mean that you earn money with it. Right. But there's you some, know, uh, just... there's some, uh, there's some corruption stuff that, that they've been kind of which is a good, I guess we're in a good time now where people are bringing it up as a problem. Mm. And like, for example, Ticketmaster, like you yeah, know, the crazy course, yeah. fees that they put in there where it's like you're paying yeah. double, like the ticket is yeah. 40 bucks and then you're paying $40 in fees. It's like, what? Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Uh, we have so the same, same with Eventim is like a, a German based uh, ticket, ticket vendor. And they have like hidden fees and, processing fees and then on the top of the processing fee you have the i don't know concert fee yeah, <laughs> convenience like, just, fee like what yeah, are you talking just, about? just random fees popping up or in pop-up windows like yeah it's okay i'm gonna pay it you know yeah, it's i just want the ticket <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, i've heard that and also that's how some of the venues because they were i guess because the venues were struggling for so long before the pandemic or during the pandemic that they're trying mm. to recover some fees by taking a bigger cut of merch from the bands as well yeah uh, so, but hopefully you know that stuff starts getting cleared out because you know I, th musicians I think don't it make will money. <laughs> yeah i think i think it will i mean the, the the many different cases i've i've seen or uh that came i came across where bands mentioned that problem they also made it very clear that they won't sell merch in the venues and then just sell out out of a van or something yeah, you know do it we also, old school bootleg style in the back of a car yeah we <laughs> we 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 actually literally thought about this for for the tours that uh that we set up some kind of system where people can just say in advance what kind of shirt they would like to buy and then we make sure it's uh it's there at the day of the show and we mm. provide it afterwards you know just so we don't have to go inside and and count everything and then like we come up with with weird lists you know like yeah yeah we sh we sold one shirt today here you go uh, you sold one shirt today yeah yeah I sorry man I, I don't know what's going on but <laughs> you know so but you you can't always do that you know yeah. uh, they're Just very go down the like street vult and, vultures you know yeah, they're vultures park down the street yeah. and put up a tent with a little yeah. table and sell your merch there afterwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, bootleg uh, yeah. style. Bootleg style. Fuck it. I mean, they're go here in Los Angeles. They do that. I don't even know how they do it. It's so like I actually bought one for uh, the band Behemoth. And sorry, Behemoth, but like there was these dudes. It had, it had really cool art on the front. It had the date of the show and said Los yeah. Angeles. I'm like, <laughs> where'd you guys come up with this? This is crazy. Oh, that's a, yeah. And they were yeah, selling I, it for like we, $10 on the side of the road. We yeah. played a show in uh, in Santiago in Chile. And mm. uh, there was a guy outside the venue who was selling like refrigerator magnets. <laughs> of and the they, ocean? Were, they were, yeah, they were super cool. Like, uh, 
the Fenerozoic logo and everything. I was like, dude, can I have two? Yeah, I'm gonna pay you. <laughs> and I just, I just bought two refrigerator magnets from this guy because I, I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a weird thing too. There's a big uh, boom on the internet too of um, like bootleg stuff where people make old band shirts that don't exist anymore. They'll, they'll reprint them themselves or they'll oh, come yeah. up with new designs and. I understand that that takes away from artists making money, yeah. but it's also kind of like, I think it's creative, you know, it's a creative yeah. way. I don't know. It's a, t it's a touchy <laughs> subject. It's a, it's a very thin line. Yeah. yeah. Of course. You don't want to rob is. money from like, people that are already struggling on the road, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, sometimes you have, have bands who are like, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's like, I think it's like comp the, if, if you can print something under the commons or something I, common I'm not, law or I don't know. yeah I'm, I'm not sure what the what the terminology is but it basically says like look the album is out if you want to print it on vinyl or something just do it you know i think i think cloud kicker used to do that with his with his music and ended up like people just printing his vinyl and <laughs> just just sending him his stuff like, okay cool <laughs> Hey, I mean, yeah, I've seen a lot of that too. That's that's a uh, for me. It bothers me only because I collect vinyl. So when I see yeah. a vinyl sometimes in a store that I know doesn't exist, I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. what are you doing? I know, <laughs> I know what you're doing. That's, where did where did you get this? Where did you get this? Yeah, Limited yeah. to one copy? How mm, weird? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> yeah. um, so tell me, tell me a little bit about Nightmare. Uh, we've been mm -hmm. talking a lot about the ocean. Uh, so. Uh, this does was it this a desire in you to do something a little heavier like uh away from what you were already doing in the ocean um i mean this this project kind of came to be right after we stopped with war from a harlot's mouth i don't know if you're familiar with oh, war from a harlot's mouth yeah, yeah that's that's basically the band uh, that simon and me were in before we started nightmare and um we played in that band for eight years. We released four albums. Wow. Okay. And then to look that up. And then decided to call it quits. Or officially we went in a hiatus. I think that's still the the official version. <laughs> okay. Um and at the same time, uh Luke and Jonah from the ocean decided to quit the ocean. So that's when Robin also called me if I want to join the ocean. But uh, in parallel, Simon and me basically started this project um, to kind of continue the musical direction we were going into with War from Mahler's Mouth already. And um, it took some it took some time to to try out different different styles, you know, and uh, finding our our sound in a way. We had lots of songs written and also threw lots of songs away because we weren't happy with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the very heavy side of things has been there already before the ocean, basically, okay. it's always been, been, a a way to, I don't know, to relieve engage stress. with that. Yeah. Relieve stress or just engage with that, with that part of myself that enjoys the dissonance of life, you know, uh, mm. the, the heaviness of life and finding a way to get that out somehow and yeah that's, that's make so that important. into music that's it so is yeah it's so I, important I, to I, get it out of you man because that's how you end up yeah. with violent people doing violent things in the streets because mm -hmm. there's people that don't have an outlet don't don't yeah. they don't have a way of letting that out of them um i always appreciated that aspect of of heavy metal and heavy music overall is just having this mm. release this like okay this is where all of my anger from that guy who cut me off in traffic to the, <laughs> the guy who was talking too loud in the elevator. Like I need to yeah. find a place for this. And that's usually a yeah. good place for it. Yeah. Because you can't always, uh, I mean, the, the initial, my initial wish or reaction would be, I want to, I want to clear the situation. I want to talk to this guy, you mm -hmm. know, but sometimes you just come up to people who don't really want to. And uh, or you you're just on different kind of energy levels, you know, and then you still have this frustration in you, and then you go to a concert of your favorite band and you just, I don't know, fucking scream the fuck out of your anger, yeah, you know, mosh and, and push people around. Yeah, like, and you just you just have this energy in the room that makes you 
relieve something in yourself that uh, that maybe you otherwise don't have a way to do so you know um yeah i've always loved that <laughs> Now, to talk a little bit about like your, your your lifestyle like for yourself personally um you know i would imagine with all these projects these three different projects different music that's a lot of things to remember a lot mm -hmm. of parts to remember how do you like what is what does a regular day look for look like to you in terms of ritual for for self-care in terms of, you know, do you drink coffee? Do you do drugs? Like, do you smoke weed? Do you do mushrooms? Mm -hmm. Do you, like, what is it that you do to to keep your mind so prolific and so focused on all these different things? I, uh, it took me a very long time to, to find out how to deal with my own mind, I think. Like, I, I didn't have a very healthy culture of dealing with emotions and problems in my family. Like my family is relatively happy go lucky, you know, like everything is, is great. And uh, there was, there was not really a culture of talking about problems or issues. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was always difficult to, to understand conflict, you know, like I, I'm super conflict avoidant as well. Still to this day, like I don't, I don't enjoy conflict at all. I'm, I'm trying to be the peacekeeper <laughs> as much okay. as possible, you know. Okay. And um, of course, that also led to conflict eventually because uh, sometimes you just gotta talk about shit and clear things up, you know. And um, yeah, it took me up until my my early thirties basically to. Wow. to realize to realize that i mean of course not, it doesn't mean that i'm not i wasn't capable of uh, having difficult conversations but yeah in my early 30s i noticed something i need to change something and i uh, started to listen more to what's going on inside myself um reading different books on on self-care on how to understand emotions and uh, started doing sports and uh workouts doing yoga going running stuff like this which i do to this day basically um i try to do yoga almost daily in the morning when i get up i do drink coffee i love coffee <laughs> <laughs> although sometimes if i have too much coffee i can be a a bundle of uh, energy and and <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Yeah, a little bit maybe of anxiety. That's... I get, I get a little bit of anxiety. Yeah. You know, I've been trying to, to cut back a little bit from the coffee. Just, I love coffee. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm Cuban. I was born with. I'm not even kidding. I, I. One of my earliest memories. I may have said this on the show before, but one of my earliest memories, is being drinking coffee with milk, out mm -hmm. of a baby bottle. <laughs> that my my grandmother gave me when I was a little kid. <laughs> Just drinking coffee and milk, like thinking like, what is this? This is so good. Uh, <laughs> so I have a very Man. high tolerance too. Okay. You know, yeah. For caffeine. So, um, <laughs> How much coffee do you drink per day? Like two uh, liters I mean, or? <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, I haven't measured it. I know I, we have, I have one of those, uh, the Chemex. That's like a glass bottle that, that opens oh, yeah, up okay. mm -hmm. with a slow drip. Oh, nice. I fill that whole thing up and I think yeah. it's, it's like, a, like a, one of these, I'd have like three or four of those. Oh, it's, God. A lot of coffee. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. So I'm trying to cut back because I have noticed yeah. now that as I'm getting older, like I'm getting a mm. lot of uh, like anxiety. I'm getting a little shaky, mm. you know, um, mm. which is when I started, I started taking this stuff right here, this uh, magic mind mm -hmm. that uh, I've been drinking. It's a matcha tea with a, a bunch of adaptogens and nootropics and mushrooms and, it's got mm -hmm. stuff for your vitamins and immunity, but it, it, it gives me the focus, but I don't have the, mm -hmm. the stress, which is what I'm worried yeah. about with all the coffee. Ah, yeah. Right so yeah, actually, I'm going to check that out. Let me drink it right now. Mm. <laughs> you, gotta stay focused. You, need to, you need to focus, dude. Yeah, I need to focus. <laughs> yeah, check out Magic Mind. It's a, it's a healthy new, like, it's, I, I think that anything that's natural that's of the earth mm -hmm. like matcha and mushrooms to me that's that's the way to go like i'm grateful yeah. i i have had a time in my life where i experimented with 
harder drugs when I was younger, mm -hmm. but I'm glad I stayed away from it and just focus on the stuff that's from the planet, you know, like yeah. weed and mm -hmm. shrooms. Those are fine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Once I just get I've, into pills. This gets crazy. <laughs> yeah. I've, I mean, I have, I've had my share on, on many things as well. Um, I've only had one like micro dosing experience with mushrooms. Oh, okay. Um, which, which was nice, but I, I have never done the, the full dive, so to say. Um, I'm curious though. Um, I do smoke weed regularly, although I have to say in recent months, I'm, I'm not really enjoying it too much. It's, I'm just, uh, I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm losing a bit of energy mm. if I do it too much, you know, so I, 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 I like having it around, but I don't really use it. So uh, uh, what's the situation like in Germany with that? Is it, is it legal? Like, can you go to a dispensary or like it is here or no? No, no, it's not legal yet. Okay. I think they've just, um, it's, it's going through the parliament. I think like they, they said they would legalize it, um, for medical reasons. Mm. Okay. And I think owning it would be decriminalized. Um, I'm just not sure when that's going to happen. I mean, they've been saying this for for two years now, and mm. it, it can take another two, three years because it has to go to the European Parliament as well, and they have to agree to the to the rules they set up, you know, so uh, it's not as easy as just saying it's legal now, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's interesting. But, yeah. I mean, that, that was the steps here with legalizing it. It became first medicine, and then uh, having it is you can have mm -hmm. up to a certain amount where it's not illegal and then mm -hmm. um, then little by little it's just like now I can just walk into a store and they mm -hmm. give me samples mm -hmm. it's crazy like who does samples of weed like what yeah. are you talking about I drove here like I, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know like sir would you like to sample this dab it's like what I'm gonna go to yeah. outer space what do you mean <laughs> Just have it. It's yeah, fine. It's fine. You'll be fine. Here, we also yeah. have these other things you can take and uh, to bring you back down. Like it's, I'm I'm curious to where this is all going because I mean I've seen a lot of research expanding on on you know mushrooms and other psychedelics mm -hmm. and I think Oregon, like where you were, you know, you were the band is from. Like, yeah, I think they could do like anything pretty much uh, at this point. Like I, I think, I think I, so. Yeah. Yeah, and like that's a. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> about all that. That's a yeah. lot. I, I think, I mean, in, in the end, like what they did in Portugal as well is just uh, to, they decriminalized all drugs, basically. So uh, it's not, it's, you can't go to prison anymore if you have drugs on you, mm. you know? And uh, in that regard, I think it just, just helps people to, to understand what they're dealing with a little right. bit better. You know, if it's, if it comes into the discussion at least of uh, people learning about things and understanding what this does to the body or what this does to the mind, you know, then at least you have some kind of, uh, um, I don't know, you just educate yourself a little more about these things. And it, it becomes part of a cultural discussion as well, instead of uh, just wiping it off the table and, and yelling, criminal you know yeah that well that that also goes back to what i said about music and and mm -mm. pushing the red button you tell me that this is illegal yeah. i'm gonna go see what's up i want to go try yeah you know what yeah, I mean? exactly. it brings it it brings that yeah. element of people people are going to look into it if for the wrong reasons because mm. they're doing it just to rebel as opposed to for whatever medicinal properties it may have so yeah yeah um so in in I mean, I was asking all of this stuff too, and and asking about your dealing with your emotions and whatnot, because uh, you know the the subject matter of of some of the music you work on, you know, mm -hmm. like for example, the ocean deals with a lot of uh, the 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 future of humanity. Not just that, mm -hmm. but you know the the meteor that came and took out the dinosaurs, like the the potential of some catastrophic natural event taking us all out again. That's some mm -hmm. pretty heavy stuff. You know, that that <laughs> that could you know, could drive people crazy to think about that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. Nightmare, also, I'm assuming dark, dark psycho psychological, uh, you know, dissonance, like you said. Um, mm -hmm. So is that something that you deal with, like in terms of lyrical content? Like, 
how much of that is is something that you subscribe to or are you just coming mm. in as a studio musician and just dealing with the musical aspect of it or or are you also you know is your mind also focused on some of the lyrical content yeah of course i mean i've always been interested in philosophical concepts as well uh stoic concepts nihilistic concepts uh humanistic concepts it's uh it's something that if you if you have only the slightest interest in in humanity and the future of humanity or the past of humanity or life in general then you will you will somehow end up thinking about these things you know um i think uh the the the, the prospects of catastrophe are always lurking around the corner <laughs> you know uh, anything can happen anytime if you if you think about it and not dealing with these things only makes you in, ignore reality in that regard so um i always find it interesting what robin writes uh, for the ocean for example he's he's a very smart guy uh writing very good lyrics um, yeah, the only paleontologist same. I've ever had on the show. So, <laughs> yeah, he's he's a he's a he's a super smart guy, and I I love the way he thinks about stuff. And uh, same as with with Johnny and Simon from from Nightmare, they they always dive deep into the most miserable lyrical content you can imagine. You know, yeah. um, kind of visualizing misery in a in a in a way that attracts to you, if that sounds right, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, yeah it's kind of like the attraction of like movies like Hellraiser and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. It's the most extreme, but you still want to see like, oh, wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting. I've never seen that. Yeah. Yeah, like a car crash, you know. Yeah, it's a <laughs> some, horrible thing, but you you some still horrible stop. stuff. You just you just want to see what what is this fucking thing there? This yeah. looks horrible, yeah. you know. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, of course, on a daily basis, there there are many things that that happen to us um, that can make us uh, aggravated or worried or anxious about things, you know. And um, I think it's it's important to to also commit to thinking about this stuff, you know, and uh, being honest about about the nasty stuff that happens to us as well, and not just. Uh, looking through a pink pink sunny glasses you know and uh, of course life is beautiful you know yeah. like i i love life <laughs> otherwise i i wouldn't enjoy it and uh, but in order to enjoy it you have to make sure that the the nasty stuff that is there doesn't end up being wiped under the carpet you know because uh, it just gets bigger and bigger and at some point it's going to going to haunt you somehow so uh, yeah yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been I've been thinking about you know just the fact that I saw somewhere on the internet that the 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 four most the hottest days the four hottest days ever recorded mm. happened recently, and I'm just like, well, yeah. hell, you in know, July, yeah, what's going on? Like, how mm -hmm. is nobody talking about this? You know, this is yeah, <clears throat> they're worried about what Trump is saying or mm -hmm. the Kardashians or Nicki Minaj, whatever it is. Like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> We're burning. We're yeah, burning exactly. alive. What's yeah. going on? What are what are you doing? You know, like it is it's just the the dissonance is so aggravating to me sometimes. You know, yeah. like uh, we all we all know that this stuff is important and it is it, it's okay to panic about the stuff a little bit, you know, like otherwise you you can't activate anything. You know, if people just sit there like the fucking you know the meme with the dog with a cup of coffee. Oh, this just, is fine. This is this is fine. You know, no, it's not fine. No, it's I know not. it. It's it's very funny, but yeah. this is literally us right now. You know, yeah. just like, oh, I love this coffee. Speaking of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild, uh -huh. man. And you know, there's also yeah. the the there's the more frustrating people to me are the ones that I've I've spoken to people that say it's normal. The planet. Mm. The planet has cycles and then mm. you know thousands of years ago you know there's watermarks on the pyramids and this yeah. and that and it's like you know it's part of the cycle what are you going to do about it mm. it's not it's not the humans and i'm like well mm. 
Yes, well, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Like we're yeah. definitely causing some damage. I can see it with my eyes. Like it's not. Mm. Uh, you see these billows of smoke coming out of factories, or you know, yeah. like there's more people on the planet now than ever before. You mm. know, and, and creating. They're driving cars. They're you know causing more chaos, creating more garbage. Yeah. How can you just say it's a cycle of like I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't want to get all doom and gloom, but I do think it's important. The message that you guys put out with your music and the, yeah. the, the idea of, hey, we should pay attention to this kind of stuff, at least a little, you know, just yeah. have a little bit of balance. Don't be the crazy guy on the corner at the streetlight yelling and screaming at the clouds because that's not going <laughs> to do anything. Exactly, but, also, yeah. but, you know, try and spread a message of like, hey, do you want to have a planet to live on or you want your kids to have a planet mm. to live on? Like. It's a little I'm not a I'm also not a environmentalist either. I'm not chaining myself to a tree in the rainforest mm. either. But I yeah. care about being here a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I think yeah, just uh if you if you can somehow communicate with people in a way that makes them empathetic to to what you're saying, you know, without being irritated or chased away you know i think that that really helps to communicate issues as well you know like if you yell at someone they're not gonna listen to you you know like if you yell at me you're gonna fucking die <laughs> <You know? laughs> then i'm gonna, yeah and then i'm gonna be like yeah everybody dies everybody you know dies, bro. Get, get everybody started. dies bro get fucked <laughs> you know <laughs> but if you come to me and like look um you should uh, eat more healthily because you have this and this, and you know, like a doctor or whatever. And like, you know, like that's what we have scientists for. They communicate the things that we don't know shit about. <laughs> you know, they they learn that stuff. And if somebody says the world is burning and we should change something, then I think it's a good reason to listen to them. I think we need to get sexy people on board because that's how oh, you yeah. get it. that's how you get people's attention. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's how I got my attention. Like I remember I protested. Uh, I protested a circus once because of a pretty lady. So, you know, and it's not that the, what the it's not that what they were doing wasn't bad. It was bad, but yeah. I only paid attention because a pretty lady told me about it. So. Ah. <laughs> well, you, you conveyed the, you conveyed the message. Right, right, right. We got to get you some know? pretty people on board to to, to That's start. and that's why you that's why you did the podcast with me, right? Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. But uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, it's, 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 you know, I think it's something that we should be more careful of. And, uh, I don't know who knows whatever happens. Well, let me ask you this. How, how is Europe and Germany dealing with the, the recent surge of alien activity? <laughs> Cause here in the U S everybody's I, going crazy about it. Uh, I have absolutely no idea, dude. Like, yeah. uh, I've only seen, seen it, uh, in the news, like, us says there are ufos <laughs> something like this and i was just okay so now what <laughs> but i mean i'm i'm not even i'm not even shocked anymore like how can i with all the stuff happening in recent years like how can i be, <laughs> be surprised by this you know yeah. i just i'm just like i don't know what this means for me you know like if I there's any good things yeah maybe if there's any uh terre how do you say Tere extra, no, not extraterrestrial. extraterrestrial extra extra terrestrial. If there's any extraterrestrial life out there then uh please come and uh, help us solve ourselves <laughs> <laughs> well look i mean and i mean no offense by this at all but sometimes i look at certain musicians like a, like they're extraterrestrials like you for example like mm -hmm. i watch i <laughs> dude i'm telling you i studied that jurassic playthrough I don't know, 10, 15 times. And I'm like watching your like man maneuvers. And I'm like, how is he doing that? That's not possible. So I, I, I that or like animals as leaders. Like I think Tozen is not from here oh, dude. at all. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's where, I don't, I don't know where this guy's come from. Mm -mm. Yeah. But same with Matt Garska. They're just, but this is, that's the thing, you know, like if you, if people, some people are so, so incredibly specialized in their skills because they are so hyper focused on creating things with their with their hands and just 
whatever happens in their brains and getting this the stuff out you know yeah like it's it can be very difficult to comprehend you know it right. for me it's the same with the other way around with somebody who's uh like developers for example you know like mm. some of these programming languages i'm like I have no fucking clue what this is, you know. It's just characters but you, on a you, screen. You <laughs> you you read it like an image, you know, and I read it like like uh, in the Matrix, basically. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, for me, it's just just letters floating around, and you know exactly how to do that. And that's a, uh, I think it's just a matter of expertise in the in a way, you know. Yeah. Focusing on something that you enjoy, and then, yeah. That can can seem a little alien sometimes, for sure. I think it's funny that, you know, I said earlier that people here are going crazy with it. And I, I may have mm -hmm. said the wrong words. What I mean is they're going crazy in that they don't, they like you said, like they don't even register. Like, mm -hmm. hey, guys, we have aliens. They're like, okay, cool, whatever. Like, yeah. what do you mean? <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> it is kind of, yeah, if they, if they would have done that in the 90s, I think oh. people would have freaked out. They know? would have lost it. They would have, everybody yeah. be on the streets screaming. Like, yeah. I'm holding I'm, up signs. Yeah, I'm hoping that they, you know, we get some technology, some new mm -hmm. technology. Can we, they're saying, the reports are saying that we have uh, aliens, like, in captivity here, that they exist, mm -hmm. that they're here, that they're, they're, they're in lab somewhere. Uh, let's trade them back to their people in exchange for some new technology, like yeah. you know, telepathy or something. Like that should be, you know, teleportation would be nice. That way we can get rid of traffic. Do you do you really want telepathy? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would, if you can uh, turn it on and off. Yes. Right? Yeah, like the Wi-Fi <laughs> switch on your phone. You know, I I'm yeah. gonna turn it on for a few minutes and we can tele you know communicate telepathically. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> teleportation to me is the big one. I want that. Oh yeah, that would right be nice. away, man. You imagine? What about time travel? I've thought about that many times. I'm not sure if I would want that actually. Mm. I don't want to see the future or the past. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm good with yeah. time travel. I like yeah. I like teleporting because you could, you know, if I want to go see a concert, you know, you could just. Phew, show up at the show you don't have to park the car i don't yeah. have to leave an hour early or whatever it is to to get there um or to see friends like hey let's hang out this weekend cool i'll meet you there Poof, and you're there like yeah. that would be so great <laughs> as opposed to and it would save a lot of the planet in terms of uh car exhaust and yeah totally jet yeah. fuel and all that stuff whatever <laughs> for planes and whatever um <laughs> if you had uh i'll leave you with one final question if you had a choice of one superpower as so you get a, uh -huh. ge a genie or an alien oh, shows God. up an alien shows up and says you can have one power what are you yeah. getting i would like to heal any disease oh that's a good one like yeah. for yourself or for everyone like you could just for touch everyone. somebody oh. for, exactly for everyone yeah. That's very humble of take, you. Very nice. Take the pain away, basically. Take the pain away. Well, I mean, there's drugs for that. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. I mean, that's I, a nice I, one. That's a nice one. I've yeah, never thought I, of that. I, don't, I, I think I would be more altruistic in that regard. Uh, just nice. making sure that everyone is having a good time. But that would also mean that everyone might come up, ring my, my doorbell, like, hey, dude. I have the scratch here. Yeah. Hey, man, does this look infected? <laughs> I have this new tattoo here. Can you take a look? <laughs> no, uh, I can't feel that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Paul, thank you so much. I'm so glad we finally sat down and talked. Uh, like it's said, mutual. Yeah. yeah. I've been a fan for a long time. I, I'm i looking forward to, to seeing you guys live again. I saw you... I think it was last year here. You played down the street from my my place. Actually, I walked. Oh yeah. I walked over with, Cata the, with Catatonia or with Leftist. Yeah, yeah. Cata no. Uh, yes, Catatonia played. Yeah. Um, and Stella Darling. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was at the El Rey Theater. That was fun. Oh yeah, that was a crazy night. Yeah, that was. <laughs> was. That, was uh, I there remember. was a shooting that night. There was a shooting that night. Yeah. Yeah. This, and this was already after. Leoric had he had the 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 legs breaking, 
Was that that was that after? was uh, that was half a year before that? That was yeah. before that. This was after we had healed up already. <laughs> You're digging up these topics now, and my my head is just oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I remember, I saw you guys when he broke his legs, he was in a wheelchair, and then I yeah. saw you again after that when he had recovered. Yeah. 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 yeah just remember that that night in uh, the El Rey Theater because I got so high on edibles. <laughs> that I just, That's L- I just, LA. Ended, I just ended up in my in my bunk in the bus, and the next morning I woke up and everybody's like, "Dude, there was a shooting outside with helicopters and police everywhere," and I didn't notice anything. I was just, I was just out there. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I hit up Robin actually because I was trying to meet up with you guys. I had a bunch of beer that I wanted to give you. Yeah, but even oh. him, he was so like out of it too because he had apparently taken some medals too. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah it, was, well, it was still a fun happens. night. Yeah, it happens. It, it's not like you yeah. guys won't be back. Uh, the, but uh, uh, do you know? Do you know if there's any tours coming up for you uh, soon? We're we're working on getting back next year, early next year, probably February, March, or something. Um, I'm not sure if it's it's all fixed and carved in stone yet, but um, we will. We're trying to get back as soon as possible. Okay. Um, so I want to say yes, we will come back soon. Awesome. And then for, yeah. for people that are watching and listening, if you haven't checked out the ocean, mm-hmm. there sometimes you'll find it as the Ocean Collective. Sometimes you'll just find it as the ocean. Um, Holocene is the latest record. If you're into more uh, synthy, vibing, electronic type of vibe, go for that. Or go back into the catalog. Some of the stuff in, in you know, it, it's just like i was saying earlier like all over the place heavy mm-hmm. melodic it, it's it's something for everyone i think nightmare if you're into some dissonant crazy he- he- death metal i mean how <laughs> would you describe it yeah that's exactly how i would describe <laughs> it dissonant, dissonant death metal with industrial elements there you go you yeah. check that one out i mean i sent it to a few people and they were like what the fuck is this and like yeah, <laughs> it's it's paul's other band and they're like what <laughs> So uh, the, a lot of people are into that. And if you're into electronics, Fern, the solo project as well, right? Yeah. Let Sounds people know right. where, where do they follow you if they want to follow to get all the information. You have a website and all that stuff. I have a website, but I'm mostly active on Instagram, actually. Like uh, Paul Seidel Drums is my, my, uh, my username. If you want to follow me drums. there, hit me up. I always answer to messages. So I can link you up with anything except for edibles. <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm gonna hit you up for that some more german hip-hop later um, yeah please do please do all right brother thank you so much for you know doing the show i'm glad we finally did it we'll see each other soon for sure yeah thank you man all right take care and be safe cheers bye later